Hmm. Hello, hello, hello. So here we are once again, ready to rumble. We are on a Friday fun day. Um. So yeah, it's going to be hopefully the last Friday we're going to be working, you know, because we are so used to those long weekends, but this time around we didn't have them. Um. Yeah. So it is a pleasure, guys, to be here. It is great to um to have you here once again. Um. Yeah, I I don't know what you guys think about um technology, you know. It, I I'm wondering if you guys consider technology to be useful or if you consider it to be something that sometimes messes with our lives. What got me thinking on that? Well, many things actually. Today has been a a, a, a trending topic in my life, you know, technology and how it sometimes gets us distracted from from what we want or from what we should be paying attention to and um, the reason why I'm telling you this is because today I had a well uh, sad, sad but funny story I wanted to um, to do a test a reading comprehension test so I had you know a couple of readings there just ready to go with questions and everything uh, and yeah, last night I supposed that I had saved it once I I I logged out of the of the PowerPoint thingy, but I didn't, you know. So today the question is actually going to be about that, about how, when, and has it ever happened to you that technology messes with you, you know, because. For example, something that happened the other day to my girlfriend was that um, I was texting her. I was telling her that I was already home. I, I was um, on my way from the airport. So I was letting her know, you know, I'm already home. So everything great. No accidents, no nothing. Um, and all of a sudden, I, I felt my phone was ringing. And I, when I looked at my phone, I was like, I, I saw, you know, the, her name on it. And I saw that um, she was calling me. So I was like, okay, did anything happen? And I answered um, the call and it was actually a video call. And I was like, what? I mean, I, I got kind of excited, you know, because I was like, okay, she never does that. She calls me, yes, but she never video calls me. So I was like, what's going on? Like, why is the video call? But <clears throat> it was not an intended video call. It was an accidental video call. And... Uh, all that I heard was a guy on the bus. <laughs> he was tomate, tomate, tomate. And yeah, it was not something she was intending to do. Her phone basically uh, was calling me. I, I don't know why. I don't know how. But her phone was uh, was video calling me. Not only calling me, but video calling me. And um, yeah, and I, I, it was funny. We laughed after because I told her, like, imagine if you would have called, I don't know, maybe your boss, you know, um, and you would have video called your boss and your boss might think, oh, it's something important maybe. And uh, then he sees, you know, that you are riding the bus and, and um, I don't know, there are people around yelling and, and selling things. Um, so yeah, technology sometimes happens to do this sort of thing. The, it it, it kind of turns our lives upside down. So I want to know, how about you? What are your stories? It is, has technology ever messed with you? Has technology ever um, made you have one of those tricky moments in life? Just so you know, just so you know, it's not like I don't have anything to cover tonight. I do, but uh, I don't have the, the thing that I wanted to do. Okay, now let's go with maybe Jenny, because the last few days I haven't been asking you, Jenny. So let's hear from you. Have you ever had an encounter with technology like that, an accident with technology like that? Uh, maybe when I, bo I borrow some files, Mm -hmm. And I I want to to do the report or, or, or again. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, the same that happened to me today. You know, I had my files supposedly stored, and uh, then it just wasn't. 
and you know what sometimes this kind of thing happened to 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 um well to us i'll say because we don't listen because in my case my sister she is always telling me of how great the autosave is on 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 office you know on all office um apps she tells me like you should get used to the autosave i don't like it i don't know why it's just like i don't like knowing that i'm creating digital garbage because that's how i feel when i have autosave on but i think from now on i'll start using it because it has happened twice actually in the last few days el motivo por el que antes no les dije que me había pasado eso es porque logré salvarlo, o sea, logré más bien no salvarlo, sino rehacer la clase, logré hacerla antes de, de, de iniciar y por eso fue como que, eh, we're gonna leave it at that. Esta vez fue como que yo dije, nah, me voy a confiar, ya seguro está ahí, sí la guardé. Y ahorita que lo, lo abrí fue como que, no, no la guardé. <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, that happens. It's, it's a horrible thing. It's something very, very um, annoying, to say the least. But okay, good. Um, how about the case of um, Sandra? Has the knowledge ever messed with you, Sandra? Um, sometimes, uh, I have, I have, I have heard some conversations, but uh, uh, accidentally, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, when I was working at the airport, <laughs> um. My um, my not my husband, my 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 chief. Mm -hmm. my chief. Um, he was in in the United States, you know, mm -hmm. and and he called me uh, about uh, about the time that I have to come back home, you know, and I was very uh, a little bit angry because I had to wait for the other hour for the transportation, mm -hmm. and well, but uh, well, the matter is that. I had to to make a com a conference with with her girlfriend. Hmm. Um, in quotation mark, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, but oh my god, if I if I um, hang hang up, uh, the, the 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 communication uh, were were out, you know. Mm -hmm. So I have to uh, to be listening what they were speaking oh my god <laughs> it was very embarrassing you know mm -hmm. me yeah awkward uh, well very yes very awkward yes. yeah those situations oh my god awkward. especially when they speak with with a vocabulary that you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah been there huh? been there uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Sign actually, of this actually reminded me of something that happened to me uh, back in the day when I was younger, uh, no, back in the day when, when I, uh, what, like three years ago, kind of, I tried working for a call center. I, I tried it. I um, got into a, into a, um, into an account and yeah, I started taking calls. And one day there was this guy and uh, he was like, you and your stupid company, you are, um, you know, <laughs> All the things they say, and I was like, it's not my yeah. company, for starters, it's not my company, but yeah, sure, go ahead, say anything you guys have to say, and let it all out. Then, he told me, you were supposed to be here on, I think it was like last, uh, like last what, La like, let's say last Tuesday, okay, you were supposed to reconnect my internet connection last Tuesday, and on that account... I was able to see whether or not, or basically all the, 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 the processes, you know, that were followed for that specific customer. Oh, so yes. I was looking on the record and I saw that the technicians were actually there, you know, so they went to his house, they visited the premises and they were ready to do their job. When they tried to contact the phone that they had allowed for um, said process, the woman supposedly replied that she was busy, that she was on her way back home, but she was busy. Okay, so that was the first attempt. And they were supposed to, to write it all down. Okay, so every single report, every single line they spoke with the woman, they were supposed to write down so that we had that as a backup in the future as, as call center agents. Um, so yeah, 
he they all went ahead and, and and typed down that okay so the woman was vc she was not able to um attend us you know to to get us into the house and they cannot just get into the house on their own so they she someone has to be there or at least uh an adult has to be there um so yeah second attempt uh five minutes later she was like no i'm at a cafe right now i am having a dessert and i'm i'll be on my way home in five minutes so every customer when they have technician visits every customer has an allowance of 30 minutes now if the if the situation is more complicated than that then the technicians will report that technicians will let um somebody know that we are being held back because the situation is harder than we thought and we have to work a little bit longer on this house so let someone else know so maybe if there are other technicians in the area they can visit the rest of the customers um so yeah so it was still within her 30 minutes of allowance um so yeah she was she was okay i mean she she could uh you know wait it was funny though because the technicians even reported that they went to the gas station to get a to get a drink so it was like okay nice nice of them um and i was telling the guy this you know i was on the phone with the husband okay so that was the wife doing that and i was on the phone with the husband and as I was reading him the reports, he was like, nah, so you're trying to tell me that my wife was, is lying to me? And I was like, sir, I'm only reading the card, okay? I'm only letting you know what the technicians have, report, have reported on our system. And then uh, on the third attempt, she was like, wait, guys, I'm a, and then she mentioned the name of the cafe. And <laughs> when I read the name of the cafe to the husband, he got even madder. He was screaming. He was going crazy at it. So, Because the thing is that that cafe mm -hmm. is actually where his wife's ex-husband was working. Okay, so he was basically jealous because she was having a cafe with her ex-husband. Uh, so, yeah. And he was like, no, I don't believe any of this. Um, you have to stay with me. I have to talk to my wife. And I was like, sir, I, I mean, I wasn't supposed to let him go. I was still on training. I was still, um, you know, getting ready to, to like get on, on, on an actual, um, floor and all that. So I was still on training. I still had to be respectful with the customers. So I was like, okay, sir, it's no problem. As long as you don't take too long to get home. And he was like, no, I'm only five minutes away. I think five minutes for these people mean an hour. You know, I think they can do anything in just five minutes because it wasn't actually five minutes. Now, what I was told to do, because I was I was telling my manager, hey, look, this guy, he doesn't want me to hang up because he wants to talk to his wife and he wants me to listen uh, and to hear what he has to say because he thinks we're lying. I read him the report and he says that it's false, that her his wife uh, would never go to that cafe and, 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 and anything. Um so the manager told me, it's okay. I mean, you are still on training, so go on. Listen to, to the guy. Uh, just don't let the, um, the off time be too long. So I was like, okay, sure. I started talking to him. I, we had a conversation. We talked about American football. We talked about many things, many topics, many things came up. Okay. Um, so yeah, I did what I was supposed to do. 15 minutes after, he got home and his wife was there was there so i had to listen to the whole argument and i don't know how it ended but they yelled a lot of things they i think they got they got separated i don't know i think they did but it was all because of the internet guys you know so it was all because of that it was it was all because she was not at home when she was supposed to attend um the internet guys um so yeah that's another experience you see how technology can get you into some awkward and tricky situations because that day just because i wanted to be a nice call center agent i listened to the guy and uh, yeah i got even deeper into el chimbre uh, so, sorry el chambre el chambre so yeah it was it was spicy though it was spicy because i got to hear everything um yeah. so yeah sí, es una de esas historias que, que siempre tengo almacenadas porque de verdad quién se imagina no que o sea, que sí. se, se tope con un chambre de ese tipo. Sí, escuchar uh -huh. toda la pelea, la discusión uh -huh. y la, casi la separación de la pareja solo uh -huh. porque ella estaba en el café con el ex esposo cuando se suponía que tenía que estar en casa atendiendo a los 
a los agentes de internet. Pero igual, yeah, things bueno. that happen, things that happen. Ok, now, uh, let's hear from someone else. How about Janeth? How would that be for you, Janet? Have you ever had one of those experiences with, where technology is just out of the head? Well, um, it's maybe because uh, it happens to me many times, mm -hmm. but I think it's for sure the fact is um, I don't have, uh, uh, I don't take all the um I don't take all the 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 um, no tengo el cuidado oh, um precautions to yeah uh to see double check mm -hmm, the things mm -hmm. but the fact is um many times it happens to me that I'm too me too much um busy Mm -hmm. And I redact or, or write some documents, and when I when I finished it, um, I Don't only I, I only saved it, mm -hmm. but I forgot that I was rewrote it in another document, mm. like a base. So you have many documents of one, and then you you lose the one that you rewrote, the one that you edited. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't rename the the the, the new document. The document. The uh huh. Document, yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. I see where you're going. Oh yeah, because you work at, at a lawyer's office, right? Yeah. Okay. See, I see where you're going. I have done that before too. I work with translators. Uh, because I do translate some documents for lawyers. I also have worked with uh, as, as that. And uh, yeah, it happens. It has happened to me. And then the, the sad thing is, uh, for example, when they ask me for one document again, and I'm like, eh, sorry, don't have it. So got to wait for me for a bit because I got to finish it. Because yeah, I, it happens. So yeah. Eso, eso es algo muy común, los documentos, eh, ¿cómo serían? Duplicados, pero que no necesariamente eran duplicados, pero que uno lo el, elimina la copia y así. And then you yeah. only have the new one. When you need the old one, you don't have it anymore. So, yeah. Okay. How about Jose Luis? What is your story, Jose Luis? What has happened to you with technology that has bring you to, um, I don't know, to almost getting mad at, at technology? Mm. I I can remember nothing like that. Really? Uh, maybe when when one of my um of my video game console controllers starts to just uh, <laughs> uh Go crazy okay, or misbehave. No, and um, when is it doesn't work, for example, but mm -hmm. I think only that. I don't have yeah. many problems with technology. Okay. Yeah, because uh, something that happens to me also when I'm playing is that sometimes I generate um, too many copies of a, of a game. Like if I'm, I save, uh, uh, you know, the game and I just want to stop playing, I might just generate another and another and another um, save. So it happens quite often with GTA mostly. When I'm playing GTA, I, I get to do that. I, I save it on, on, on under one name or after one mission, and then I save it on under another and another and another. Okay, now how about um, Lourdes? What will be an, an experience you have had, Lourdes, when technology has gone crazy on you? Hi, uh, in my case, I sometimes uh, work as a graphic designer, mm -hmm. uh, so I use the uh, software like Photoshop or Illustrator, mm -hmm. and it has happened to me that sometimes I've been working a lot, and I forget to save, <laughs> and then the program freezes, and it closes, and it oh. loses everything, so I have to remember uh, what I did like 
maybe maybe when I was editing a photo or or making a paint or something like that, mm -hmm. it it hurts a lot. <laughs> yeah, it does. It hurts because it's time, it's work, it's effort wasted. So yeah, it hurts. It hurts. It hurt me too, you know, because I wanted to um to do that uh evaluation, reading evaluation this this evening, but. We're going to do it on Monday because, yeah, we're still going to have time to do it later. All right. How about the case of um, Julia? Tell us, Julia, when or have you ever had an experience uh, in which technology has gone crazy on you? Well, uh, in my case, I remember once I was working in a report and, and it was a huge report. And I remember I was so stressful that I, that I was, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and I don't know how I hide some cells on Excel. Mm -hmm. I hide the cells and I, I don't know how did I do that? And I was like losing my mind because it, it, it because it was too late and, and the, the people of the IT department, they, they weren't in the, in the office. Mm. So I was losing my mind and I, I, was, uh, I was almost about to cry mm -hmm. when one of my coworkers helped me out to, to add to, to, unhide the cells but I don't know how did I do that <laughs> and my co-worker also didn't know how we how we uh, unhide the, the cells yeah, so it was, it was so stressful I was about to cry when we saw that yeah yeah sometimes yeah. it's tricky excel is a very complicated program to um to learn you know how to operate correctly uh, but probably it's not that I, I am in a huge expert, but probably it was pro uh, a set of commands, you know, some 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 keys that you pressed um, because, yeah, it has happened to my sister, actually, um, that, yeah, some some stuff like that has happened to her. And uh, I kind of become a technician when when things like those happen, because I I am a guy who likes to um to watch tutorials whenever i face a situation like that instead of panicking i'm like okay we have youtube so we i mean i can get out of this you know um and yeah with excel i haven't really had those tricky tricky situations because that is actually kind of easy you only have to right click on the on the hidden um cells and then you know the only complication is that you can hide them all in a bunch, but you can only unhide them uh, one by one, or at least that's the way I have learned it. You know, you can hide them all at once. You can hide them like, um, I don't know, as many as you can cover at once, but you will, or at least the way that I know how to do it is that I have to unhide one by one. So yeah, that's the only tricky thing with it. But yeah, Excel is, is very complicated. All right, how about uh, Daniel? I think Daniel might be someone who also faces um, complications with technology. So tonight, Daniel, we were discussing if uh, we have ever um, come across a, a moment in our lives when technology goes crazy on us. Or we go crazy on technology, either way. No me digan que otra vez es la misma que Daniel no aparece para ustedes. ¿Les aparece Daniel en la lista? I haven't seen. Yeah, no. Qué raro. Ah, pues miren, ahí está. Sí, la tecnología se está portando mal con Daniel. Ayer y hoy aparece conectado. A mí me parece conectado. Sorry, Pero... sorry. Good evening. Oh, there you are. <laughs> yeah, sí. Sí, okay. lo que pasa es que eh, um, right now I, I am sister, baby sister. Oh. Because um, I have a 
children with disability. Mm -hmm. So, eh, estaba durmiendo la nuestra. Oh, yeah. that's okay. That's okay. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Um, if there is something that stress, uh, stress me out enough, um, it is that thing do not, uh, don't turn out according to my expectation. And above all, when it comes to working with, with electronic equipment, on my device, mm -hmm. because depending on the workload work they receive, yeah, um, they also take time to respond. It usually happened to, to me when designing and having the some number of open work window. Uh, okay. So yeah, tricky situations, tricky moments, you know, things sometimes, something that I remember used to happen to me a lot when I was still at the university was that um, I will create a document. I will probably like, um, you know, establish the margins and uh, on Word, it will say that it was printable, that, I mean, the margins were still okay and I was still able to print them and they will show on a, on a normal or on a regular um you know, bond size paper, but uh, I think it's an A4. Yeah, an A4. So yeah, but when I went to print them, they will not show. So that will happen quite often. And uh, yeah, that's something that I stopped doing. So that's why I don't have to worry about that anymore. But uh, it's something that happens a lot when it's not necessarily the computer, but the printer that misbehaves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So printers sometimes mess you up. So yeah. Uh, now, how about uh, we're going to hear now um, last from Jacqueline. Tell us, Jacqueline, have you ever had an experience like that when technology has gone crazy on you? I remember when when I had to use the uh, Excel, mm -hmm. I hate. I never could use in this moment, and right now, I I, I feel the same feeling. <laughs> I hate the Excel. Oh, okay. Yes, teacher. Excel. Ese, bueno, de hecho, saben que con um, con la misma gente, los organizadores de inglés corporativo, también hay cursos de Excel de en el mismo canal. O sea, ustedes pueden encontrar cursos de Excel y ahí, se, o sea, pueden visitar. Sí, justo estaba clases. viendo si podía como aplicar a uno. Me interesa, uh -huh. sé que, que puedo hacerlo, uh -huh. como estoy haciendo esto. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and uh, I think it's it's a little bit of more of extra work because, yeah, Excel is, is tricky. I will not deny that ever. Because it is tricky, um, but it is also very useful. In my case, one of my favorite programs when it comes to the Office package is um, Access. I don't know if you guys have ever used Access, and I feel like Access is Excel, but on on asteroids because it helps you organize so many things. And yeah, in my case, I remember when I was in high school. Um, I will love my um, my 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 computer classes when I was to work on on Access because I also remember that I was the first one who got the hang of it. You know, I was the first one on understanding how it worked, and I also got to help my my classmates with it. But okay, so right now we are going to get into this. So I didn't want to get to this topic too quickly. But uh, given that I lost the info that I was supposed to be using with you guys this evening, we're going to be discussing describing a city. I saw that you guys were sending uh, help calls on a, an exercise. Um, just a question. From what section is that exercise? Because I was trying to find it and I didn't. I couldn't find it. So from what section is the exercise that you guys were, um, were requesting assistance with? No se acuerdan de que, eh, déjenme ver, sí, creo que eran ustedes, let me see, one sec, 
Um, yeah, it was from you. ¿De qué sección era? El, el ejercicio con el que estaban necesitando ayuda. Que lo envió hace rato Madeline Vizcarra. Ah, oh, no, no, no. No, teacher. That, that is for the final test. Oh. So yes, final... I've got problems on that section. So oh. It's the only section I'm missing, you know. Miren. Así bajo de agua lo vamos a hacer el lunes, porque con los test no se supone que les debería ayudar. Sí, sí, pero veo que todos están, o sea, be, be, o sea he escuchado por ahí que, que está complicado, así que um, les voy a ayudar, sí, pero sería hasta el lunes, ¿ok? Ok. Y sí, sí, porque, ajá, con lo, 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 con lo de los test, eh, igual no se puede eh, yes. meter mucho, ¿verdad? Así que, ajá. So, yeah, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna sí, sí, sí. Para esta semana debíamos hacer la sesión 3 completada, porque eso es lo que justo completé ayer. Ya, yeah, section 3 and midterm. El midterm era el que estaba en la sección 2, ¿va? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sí, sí porque la hice la semana pasada junto a lo demás. Y okay. ayer que leí que decía que el midterm era para esa semana, pensé que había otro o que no me salía. No, el problema es que o sea, este curso, lo que les comentaba anteriormente, que es bien corto, o sea, solamente tiene cuatro secciones nada más, entonces por eso es que, ajá, por ratos hay que tratar temas diferentes, porque igual, ¿verdad? Es un curso bastante, bastante cortito en cuanto a temas, no tiene muchas, muchas eh, cosas que cubrir, pero, pero sí, eh, para esta semana... Para la próxima semana, es que también eso ha sido un enredo, fíjense que con el grupo de, de temprano me estaban reclamando, creo que ayer fue, que o sea que se sentían confundidos con eso de las fechas, porque o sea de verdad que ha sido una cosa bien compleja la que, la que pasó con este curso, pero es según entiendo yo, porque tampoco es que nos explicaron o nos dieron ninguna clase de explicación al respecto, pero según entiendo yo es que quieren salir verdad con... Um, pues con la fecha calendario, entonces o sea terminar el curso justo cuando termina el mes y eso es lo que ha provocado también que generen este, este eh, despelote, como bien diríamos eh, con, con los tiempos, ahora lo mismo sucede con lo que les comentaba acerca de que o sea, el curso es algo corto, entonces igual, ¿verdad? No, no es algo que nos va a tomar una eh, gran cantidad de tiempo terminar, pero bueno, vamos con esto, describing sí, sí. a city, yes, yes, yes sí, sí. En, es el ejercicio 3.5 de la sección 3. Ah, de verdad. Ah, donde menciona eso de Archer Cuisine. Architecture, de, yeah. Nightlife. Ok, let me see. Un punto número 2. Uh -huh. Espero que no se me haya descargado esto. A ver. Ah, sí, ahí está. Sí, sí, yo en, ese, eh, en ese ejercicio igual yo ponía Architecture y Cuisine. Pero es que yo creo que muchas veces lo del problema de la plataforma surge en que dentro de las posibilidades de respuestas que ellos eh, establecen dentro de la plataforma, quizás no ponen eh, diferentes, eh, o, o, o diferentes opciones a respuesta. Uh -huh. A veces Porque solamente veces es una. Que exigen una en específico. Sí, y eso ahí también va a haber, eso hubieran mencionado todos también, cuando, o sea, el corporativo, el corporativo que se les vuelve loca la plataforma, sí, es, otro, es otra cosa. Hoy temprano, no recuerdo ahorita exactamente con quién, pero estaba hablando con alguien eh, y haciendo mención acerca de esto, acerca de cómo a veces es bien, oh, ya me acordé, es con un practicante que yo tenía en la U, un muchacho que, que dio clase en un grupo que yo tenía antes, entonces, y, y él me preguntaba, ¿verdad?, acerca de eso. Eh, sí, Jacqueline, oh, perdón, Catherine, perdón. Catherine? Eh, solo una pregunta. ¿El midterm es algo que está aparte de la plataforma o es parte de las lecciones? Es parte de las secciones. Está en la sección 2, básicamente. Ahí cuando usted abre, abre la pestaña de la sección 2, ahí mismo también eh, en la misma estaría la sección del midterm, justo abajito. Y así se llama, midterm. Uh -huh. Midterm. Uh -huh. Sí, midterm. Ahí está, o sea, okay. se, se despliega la pestaña de la sección 2 y eh, se titula la sección 2 Mistakes and Mysteries. Y luego justo abajo está Midterm Exam. Y usted dice ahí entre paréntesis cuatro preguntas. Ok, lo voy a buscar porque creo que no lo vi. Uh -huh. Está sencillo, en realidad es, el Midterm no está tan complicado. Ok, uh -huh. gracias. Most of them are basically just true and false. Uh -huh. Teacher. 
Yes. In my case, um, I put uh, in in that order uh, in in the section in part two section three point cinco. Section three, yeah, uh, three point five. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Y no, no lo acepta, siempre lo tira con error. Así como se lo mandé ahorita, lo puso. Sí, así, así está, en ese ah, orden. No. Ahí sí, hasta no. raro, porque el otro día se los, se los, no sé si se los mandé o se los mostré nomás. No, sí. lo puse en chat. Uh -huh. Teacher, I called, I called to, to, the, to the office uh -huh. and, and they, and they um, arranged it. Really? Yeah. Because uh, otherwise, uh, it was wrong. And uh, what was the solution they gave you? Like, what was the 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 how they? Um... I don't know what. To, I don't know what <laughs> they did, but but uh, when they told me how they, how to write down all the words you you <laughs> yeah you, uh -huh. you 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 told us, it it was correct. Correct. Later, it was it was correct. I don't know what happened Entonces, síganle oh. dando, que en algún momento lo van yeah. a convencer. <ríe> Insístanle. <ríe> sí. Así como cuando el profe les decía, no, no, tiene mala respuesta. No, profe, mira, está buena. Sí, ahí reclamen en la plataforma. No, no sé, la verdad. Sí, sí, o sea, bueno, será de consultar entonces eso también, ¿verdad? Um, es extraño, la verdad, en serio, estando en, en avanzado y cómo vienen a, a pasar tantos problemas. Uh, yeah. Pero bueno. Cosas, cosas que pasan, ¿verdad? Cositas que pasan. Eh, so, 4D. Tiene un poco de dificultad. It will be 4D. But for section 4 is going to be the one that we are supposed to start covering. Oh, actually, we are supposed to start covering section 4 um, tonight. Para que vean cómo están las fechas todas, todas extrañas. Yeah. Dear. Wait. Ah, oh, no. No, con ustedes no, porque solo son cuatro secciones. Ah. Three, yeah, three. Yeah, you guys only have four sections. So no, no section four for you. Sorry, that's for uh that's for groups with five sections. I know. Bueno, igual. Did eh, you have a talk to say if you Yeah, want? I, I was about to uh to call on that. So go ahead, tell us your joke. Okay. Once upon a time there was a priest who had a cook called Maria. Uh, he said to her, Maria, cook the garobo for lunch. For me, uh, this this afternoon, this this noon. Uh, yes, Father, she replied. Now I'm going to preach in the mass. I don't want any interruption because today it will be in Latin and sound. In Latin, cantada, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, Father. Uh, si, padrecito, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Then appeared the sacristan, you know, uh, who who was called Jose, and Maria said, "Chepe, chepe." I forgot to ask for the uh, for the father for the padre. Mm -hmm. How the, he wanted me to cook the, the garobu? Don't mm -hmm. worry, he replied. I will ask for him. Uh, but the mass has begun, and it is in Latin and song. Uh, don't worry, I will see uh, what what I have to do. Mm -hmm. Come on, uh, Jose reached to the central nave, llegó a la nave central mm -hmm. uh, of the church and saw the old women with black mantillas mm -hmm. on their heads, mm -hmm. you know, black mantillas, you know, apparently very sanctified, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and the priest with his hands extended said, Dominus go do thou, amen, they said. Um, eh, eh, hey, with the organ man, I will play, said, said the sacristan in order to not be understood by these women. So playing the organ, Pam, Pam, said Maria, how you want the garapa? Amen, said mm -hmm. um, Hey, said the, the priest remembering, I didn't say to Maria how I wanted to, to be uh, done the garapa for me. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he said, tell her to make half in all wash day, and have you been Amen. Did you understand? Half in a wash day and half in? <laughs> half in a wash day and half in pinole. Oh, 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 oh. And so so all the the women also thought that it was part of the of yes, the mass, basically. The mass. 
Yeah, you because know, because it things... was in Latin, you know. Mm -hmm. So they thought it was a still part of the mass. <laughs> things that happen, things that happen. Sometimes, yeah, so... sometimes those those are not necessarily just you know jokes out of the out of thin air. Sometimes they are things that actually happen to someone. Because wow, sometimes, yeah, sometimes jokes are just you know humans being humans. If mm -hmm. I can just leave it at that, yeah, but. <laughs> It is kind of interesting. It is a, it is a bit it is a bit of a of a of a mouthful. Sí, no sé si ustedes saben para qué se usa la, la frase uh, when something is a mouthful. But mm -hmm. uh, we use we say it is a bit of a mouthful when we are trying to tell something that, uh, for example, when we have words that are a little bit long, like misunderstand. All right, oh. misunderstand, um, apprehension. For some people, in, independence may be a bit of a mouthful. So we have those words that are a little bit long, are mouthful. When we have uh, um, stories that are, um, you know, a little bit like streaky and, 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 and they have many details, are also a little bit of a mouthful uh, because you have to be covering all the details. And, but you did great. I mean, you did great, you know, explaining the whole joke. And I got it. Just, I mean, to, to, yeah, so just, so just so you know. All right, now, so we are here describing a city. Um, we have these words describe different features of a city. Now, can you give a definition for each word or phrase? Which features are most important to you when you're choosing a city to visit? All right, so these are some of the words, if you remember the ones that we have uh, been dealing with in, in um, exercise 3.5 are some of these words. So we have arch architecture, cuisine, customs, festivals, historical sites, nightlife, life, scenery, and shopping. Uh, we have a little bit of uh, a helper here when uh, we see that architecture can be um, defined or described as refers to the design and construction of buildings. Now, I want you guys to think about it. What will be your description? What will be your definition, your personal definition for each of these words? And when you go to a city, which one of these will be the one that you will consider to be the most important, the most relevant? Like if you go to a city because of its nightlife, like would you like to visit, I don't know, Madrid? because of its nightlife? Or for example, would you like to go to Macau because of its scenery or shopping? Would you like to go to Las Vegas because of its cuisine or the customs that people have there? Would you like to go to um, New York because of the historical sites? I don't know. Now, let's just consider that, okay? So try to, try to create a definition it can be a simple definition. It doesn't have to be um, a dictionary definition about each of these words. What do you consider to be um, within the, re the the margins of these definitions of this? Sorry, of these words or um, these terms over here. And then reply. What will be the most important thing for you when you go to a city? Now, I will start by asking you guys for the definitions. Let's see. Roberto, uh, what or how would you define festivals? What is a festival to you? The word festivals. Yes, oh. festivals. How would you define festivals? Uh, festival refers to the special dates in the city. Mm -hmm when they celebrate a specific, uh, for example, San, San Patrono de X or San Maria Tal, similar. Okay, so that is a festival. Cool, very nice. And in your case, when you have the chance to visit a city, what is the thing that you like the most? Like if, uh, if you go to a city, what would you be looking for in a city that you want to visit? Uh, when I when I go to uh, some city, I looking for historical sites and some shopping stores. 
Okay, nice. So when you go to historical cities, you'll be, um, you know, looking for historical sites and shopping stores. Very good. Sounds uh, a lot like what I would do. Now, uh, how about, uh, let's see, um, Catherine, in your case, Catherine, how would you describe scenery? What is the definition you will provide for the word scenery? Okay, we don't um, have it right now. Let's see if we can get an answer from Julia. How about you, Julia? If you were to... Um... Oh, okay, understood, understood. If you were to provide a definition for the word scenery, Julia, how would you describe um, scenery? Okay, for me, the scenery is something like the, the views like beautiful places, landscapes, something like that. Like right. beaches or something. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, that is basically what will land into the description of what scenery is. Um, and now, if you go to a city, what is the thing that you look forward the most? What is the thing that you want to see about the city when you have the chance to visit a new city? Well, in, in my case, I think I will look for some architecture and historical sites okay. because I really like like museums and I would like to visit, for example, uh, Tokyo mm -hmm. because I have heard they have a really nice museum so that's that's so, it so have hi um in the u.s in in washington dc they have the smithsonian uh, branch of museums and each of them specializes on one thing you know they have a museum for minerals and human history they have one for um anthropology they have one for physics they have one for um, what you call it for Egyptian history. They have one for aviation history. They have one for um, more oh, wait well, vehicles, yeah, motor vehicles um, history, and uh, they also have one for UFOs. Um, so yeah, those museums i had the chance to go to one of them i went to the minerals and human history one they are just mind-blowing okay i have gone to museums here in, in el salvador a few times because i am also a person of, of museums i like to go to um you know to see if i can find out new details about things if i can learn anything new about things and uh, that day i spent there i stayed there for like six hours I felt like time just flew by me. I didn't realize when it got dark, when it was already time to go home because I was so entertained. So for those people who want to visit new cities, for those people who want to go to different places, and if you like museums, go to those museums. Okay, I am. Uh, it's, not, it's not a command. Sorry that I said it like that, but it's a, a, a great suggestion. If you like museums, go to the Smithsonian's because they are just great, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, they, all, they also have the museums for past wars, okay? El, el Museo de las, de las Diferentes Guerras. So basically the whole road, they call it the mall. I don't know why, but they call it the mall, the National Mall. Um, there are not really shopping stores there, but um, yeah, they call it the National Mall. It is basically all museums and, um, and government offices. But yeah, it is well worth the while because they all look great, in, in, in my opinion, at least. So if you guys ever get the chance, you know, to go, um, you're going to have also your perspective on them. All right, moving on. Um, let's see if we can get the definition for nightlife from Janet. How would you describe or define nightlife, Janet? Um, my life, uh, I think um, 
is the all the different things you can do in a place. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, at the night. Okay. Like parties or um, places to have some drinks or uh, spec. Uh, uh, <laughs> I. I I'm very bad with my mind now, <laughs> actually, <laughs> this day. Um, spectaculos. Uh-huh, shows. Mirrors. Uh-huh, yeah. That's actually what, what I was thinking of. De verdad, se lo juro que eso es lo que pensé que quería decir. Le iba a decir, pero dije, no, no la voy a dejar. <laughs> pero yeah, yeah, yeah. That's basically what nightlife is about. Now, in your case, when you go to, uh, to new cities, to different cities, what is the thing you look forward the most? Um, like places, uh, I think um, the parks. Mm -hmm. The parks, okay. uh, because they we we can to see um, the real people from the place, uh, the sellers or the the people day of day. Okay, it is actually something that happens in many cities. It happens in many cities, but in El Transito. Because <laughs> here, if you want to have if you want to have that experience, we are, I think we have mentioned that before, or somebody else has mentioned that before. El Transito is a bit of a big city, yes, in the middle of smaller cities. So many people from around here, from San, um, sorry, San Rafael, from Batres, uh, from San Jorge, they all come here to do their shopping, okay? And um, one of the biggest things that we have is our market, okay? I have been to many cities and I have never, ever seen what is here in El Transito. Most of the time, in front of the Catholic Church, there is going to be a park in most um, towns in our country, okay? It is basically everywhere you go. In front of the of the of the church of capital Catholic Church, there is going to be a park or a plaza or something similar. But here in El Transito, right in front of the church is our market. Okay, our community market. It's not supermarket. It's a market. And uh, yeah, because that's what we do. You know, it's the center of our city. It's 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 one of the biggest markets around here. Yes, maybe. Um, but yeah. They, I don't know why or when, they decided that the idea of having a park right in the middle of the city was not good. Um, so people don't really go to the park. They go to the market. Um, yes, Catherine. Yes, I'm sorry. I get home already. So okay. something that I want to add regards you saying right now, actually, my theory is if you want to know a city or a town, you must go to the market but the market, not supermarket, mm -hmm. because it's basically the center of the, of the community, of the shopping and everything. That's a theory that I have, and I try to do it every time that I go out downtown. I'm scared of that, and honestly, because of my own city, I'm scared of, of, I have tried it. I remember I went to Atikisaya like a month ago, and uh, I went to the market, but I was scared of like interacting with people. But I also see a lot of, you know, of potential on, on your assertment because one time when I went to Zacapa in Guatemala, uh, I also went to the market and I noticed some, some details about the people there. One of them, and one that is very important to me, is that they are short, okay? Uh, they are very, very short. I was actually the tallest person um, it's San Miguel. It's part of San Miguel. The other day when you were here in Usulután, you were very close from El Transito. Oh, um, good. Yeah, you were around, what, 10 Thank to you. 15 minutes away, depending on traffic. Just 10 oh. to 15 minutes away from El Transito. San Miguel. Yeah, El Transito is the biggest city between, um, between Usulután and San Miguel. You won't see any other city uh, from here to, to San Miguel. Um, so that's oh. why, you know, we are so centric. Even buses, you know, in, uh, inter um, interdepartmental buses, they make a stop here in El Transito. O sea, se meten a, a, a todo el pueblo. O sea, por, por lo que es así como bastante, bastante grande. Um, but yeah, 
but it was. Uh, sorry. sorry? Thank you. Oh, yeah, no. I didn't know. I didn't well, know what department belongs uh, El Transito. Oh, really? I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but yeah, it's many people think it's far part of Usulutan because we're very close from from Usulutan, but no, mm -hmm. actually, my house is at the border because I told you the other day my house is is relatively big compared to the uh, to the colony right in front. Um, there is only one more um property between my house and uh, El Transit, I mean San Miguel and Usulutan's border. Oh my on, god. Yeah, so we're very close, you know, we're very we're close in the middle. Being, yeah, from being from 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 Usulutan, but we're not. Oh. We're not from okay. Usulutan. We don't support El Firpo. We support Aguila here. So yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> anyway, going to the market. I will try it. I will try it more often because it is true. You know, you see the true people in, at the market. You see if they are nice, you see if they are rude. I don't know if I will be begging to, I mean, uh, willing to um, to root for my people because I think people here in El Transito are a little bit rude uh, when they don't know you and even if they do. Um, so yeah, I think I would not be betting on us because they, we are not very nice. I mean, people here are not, are not necessarily nice. Um, but okay, now next one up. Let's hear if we have a definition for cuisine. How would you describe cuisine, um, Jacqueline? What would be the way in which you would describe cuisine? What is cuisine to you? Uh, I think the chair cuisine is referred to all uh, food uh, that, that I can uh, eat in, in this place. Good, yes, I very think. Good. That is cuisine, basically. So, yes. I mean, it can be classic it can be um restaurant it can be modern so yeah basically that is what we refer to when we talk about cuisine now in your specific situation what will be the most important thing that you will visit uh when you go to a new city when i have the the opportunity to visit uh, some some place i think uh, i look into to historic historical sites because i i like a lot in know about this this place okay and yes and i enjoy doing okay cool great you know nowadays actually or i think in our country not many cities have uh, like a specific museum um i remember that for for like two years we used to have a museum here in transito that held the history of this town because it was actually founded for um for travelers because people from from all the, the smaller towns around here used to travel in between um it's not Jucuapa, the one uh, chinameca and Jucuaran. So people used to travel between those two cities. They were used to be one of the, some of the bigger um, cities here in, in the region. And, uh, but it was too long of a, of a journey to do it on just one go. So they started stopping at some uh, pochote trees. They, they are uh, some big trees with a lot of like uh, shade. And um, yeah, so people started stopping here. And then as people saw that other people were stopping here, they decided to open stores. They start, decided to start selling things to people. And you see that there's where the, the, the history comes, you know, that um, our town was funded on commerce. Our town was basically um, founded on that, on, on, on people selling things to others. And that's how we got to get also a, a tiangue. And that's how we ended up becoming a commercially active um, town. Because basically every town has its magic. In, uh, for example, in Batres, one of the things that I like about Batres is their natural resources. In my case, for example, when I visit a new city, I like to go to the natural resources. Uh, what I mean by that is I like to go to rivers, to lakes, um, forests, uh, wetlands that it may have because I enjoy having time uh, on fresh air. So Valtres has that to offer. Um, 
in the case of uh, San Rafael, I'm not sure what San Rafael offers. Honestly, it's just a town, in, in my opinion. Um, San Jorge. And what about Chinameca, teacher? Well, I've, I've, I've only been to Chinameca twice. I know that Chinameca is a very, how can we say it? Fresh town. It is fresh. Yeah. It has um, some nice bread, you know, tostacas and, and, and totopostes. They are great from China. Yeah. And chambergas too. Uh huh. Aquí les dicen tostacas. No, no, no. Chambergas are uh, sweet bread. Sweet sweet bread. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, because my that, husband was born there. That's actually the reason why I have been to Chinameca because one of my friends, he when when he goes to the U.S. He always brings a lot of sweet bread from from Chinameca oh. to his family in California. Delicious, so, yeah. mm -hmm. because <laughs> they are actually, I mean, their 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 family is actually from there, but they then mm -hmm. moved to live here in El Tantito. Uh, but yeah, every town has its magic, I think. But San Rafael, yes, yes <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, basically we are done. Uh, sorry that the time is up. But on Monday, uh, we're going to continue working on the platform. You know, please remind me that we have to solve that exercise. Um, yes. So, yeah, we can uh, get out of that and uh, solve those exercises. For now, yes. all I have to do is just thank you guys very much for your attention and participation on this evening's class. Yes. I hope you have an amazing weekend. This time I, I didn't ask the typical weekend question. Um, but, yeah, hopefully you guys have an amazing weekend. And see you Monday. So take okay. care for now. Bye-bye. Take care, teacher.